The U.S. says it has carried out several airstrikes on the positions of the Popular Mobilization Forces in Iraq. At least 15 volunteer forces have been killed in the attacks. The Pentagon says the raids targeted weapons depots and command centers, centers in response to attacks on American forces in Iraq. The Popular Mobilization Forces have also confirmed the U.S. airstrikes. The positions of the PMU forces have been targeted several times this year, which Iraqi officials have blamed on the U.S. and Israel. Following Sunday's attacks, the Popular Forces urged the Iraqi people and military to end the U.S. military presence in the country. The PMU is part of Iraq's armed forces and has been fully recognized by the government in Baghdad. The group has been instrumental in the fight against Daesh. Joining us now on this developing story is Jason Unra, a political commentator out of Ontario. Mr. Unra, can the U.S. occupation afford another, another war, essentially, with the Iraqi resistance? I don't think the United States could really afford another incident, like another drawn out conflict inside of the country. I think there's a question of, well, militarily, I, I'm sure they could probably scrape together the resources somewhere to carry it out. But I don't think the political capital is there in order to be able to uh, continue a campaign like this. I mean, already the United States government is in a very precarious position given the, the pending um, impeachment of Donald Trump right now, or at least the, at the very least, the ongoing proceedings regarding that. So I think that any kind of, uh, any kind of violent move, any kind of thing that would bring more hostilities inside of the country would probably not be something that would be very good for the image of the United States right now, the United States right now, given what a precarious position it, it's already in. I think that uh, U.S. President Donald Trump wants to, is watching very closely what he manages to do during uh, these impeachment proceedings, not to call attention to anything uh, negative about himself, one of those things being the campaign promise to stop the wars. If, again, he's now escalating conflict inside one of the countries who've been a longstanding victim of U.S. imperialism, that might reflect badly on him. Uh, it might not, but I think that the chance is there that it just it, it won't be there for them. And I think that um, a lot of the generals and the higher ranking members of the military are uh, growing tired of fighting an unending conflict in the country. I'm certain they're fine with a continued occupation, but for uh, putting the stress of essentially another war, another counterinsurgency measure of the country, is not something that they want to do. I mean, the, the armed forces of the United States are stretched very thin at this time, primarily due to the ongoing and unwinnable conflict inside of Afghanistan. If now they were to open up another front in another country, that would put a further drain on resources. And this is not something the U.S. wants to do. They want the a relative peace and stability inside the country in order to forward profit making. Now, if something comes along that's a threat to that, to, to those profits, like a growing influence by another country, like, say, Iran, et cetera, the, the growing friendship between the two countries, that's not something the U.S. can stand. Now, what the U.S. does need is a certain level of justification for being there. They want a relatively quiet situation in order to continue uh, extracting value from the country, but they also need that justification for being there to justify a military presence in order to protect that extraction process. And one of those things is to... Uh, in a very underhanded and backdoor way, continue to help ISIS continue to be a threat inside the country. So the U.S. has that uh, political excuse for being inside the country, even though they're the ones that are uh, primarily responsible for the spread of ISIS uh, throughout the, the Middle East. So uh, in my opinion, while they, they probably could handle some kind of an insurgency, I think this is all part of a larger distraction tactic to uh, justify a continued occupation of the country. Yeah, and Jason, from the reaction that we're seeing in the aftermath of the attack, it appears you're saying that the occupation may, the, Washington will want to maintain its occupation of Iraq, but not necessarily engage in uh, open warfare with the Iraqi resistance. The reaction we're seeing following this attack indicates that voices may grow louder to end the American occupation of Iraq.
Would you do you think that's going that's going to happen? Oh, I think that's definitely going to happen as a result. The United States is an unwelcome presence. Thus, they have to come up with an excuse to be there. Thus, creating the excuses further accelerates people wanting them to leave. Of course, this is the problem when you're trying to occupy a country that doesn't want to be occupied. It's it's an inherent contradiction in the, the very nature of the imperialist occupation of the country. You need the excuse, yet the excuse is also the reason to uh, make them leave. So that that's really the balancing act that the United States has to do. They need to justify being there, but not create a social pressure so great that it may end up costing them the ability to occupy the country. I mean, if the United States would roll in with the military and kill a million and a half people, obviously occupying the country on a purely military basis is is, is not beyond them. It's not something they would have any moral qualms about doing. Okay. But this is not an outright war situation. This is more of a, we are here to protect, but in order to keep that up, we have to do things that would place people in danger to make it look like that we're fighting the things that make them put in danger. So it, it's like a, a very complicated act in trying to okay. present themselves as a public face to the Iraqi people. Jason and Ray joining us from Ontario. Thank you very much indeed for your contribution.